Void 3.0 is in full swing and the hunters have received some welcoming buffs to their invisibility setup. If you haven't tried my Graviton Forfeit build that I recently updated, then you're missing out on a bunch of things as that build will carry you all the way into end game. However, if you want something with a little bit more flair to it, something that allows you to stay constantly invisible for both you and your team, then this Omnoxus build is the one you want to aim for. Not only will you be able to stay invisible with double smokes and dodge available, but you'll also be debuffing combatants like crazy and have a high level of resistance made available to you through your use of abilities. Some of you may already be at endgame level, but if you plan to do the raid or grandmaster at some point, then this is going to be the best build for team survival in general. So before we head in, if you could do me a major favour and leave a like, a sub and turn on your notifications so we don't miss out on future content, I would really appreciate it. Starting with the subclass, we will be using the newly updated Mobius Quiver for its quick burst damage and effectiveness against bosses. For this build, we'll be following in the same footsteps as the Graviton Forfeit build we did quite a while back, although with a few changes to it. Aspects wise, we have the advancing step ability so that every time we dodge, we can go invisible. And then you want to have Trapper's Ambush, which will allow you to do a dive attack that will weaken those caught within it and make your allies invisible. As Omnoculus focuses strongly on team support, it makes the most sense to have Trapper's Ambush as we can go invisible through two ways, such as throwing our smoke bombs to the ground or using the dive attack. A Vanishing Step is designed for solo player mind, so we can easily refund our melee charge via the Gambler's Dodge ability, and doing this repeatedly will create a cycle of mobility and strength being passed back and forth. From here, you then want to have Echo Remnants Fragments which will increase our grenade duration, Echo Undermining, where your Void Grenades weaken targets, and then Echo of Persistence, where Void Abilities applied to you will increase the duration, such as going invisible. Now as presented, you get a build that offers you three ways of going invisible, such as doing a dive attack, dodging, or using your smoke bombs. And all of this will add up when paired with Omnoculus, as if you run with a team, they can keep refunding your smoke bombs as long as you like with no cooldown. The great thing about such a build is that you never know what type of invisibility you want to pull off, and although dodging and smoke bombs tend to be the most common, most situations may require you to do a third just to help out. For example, using your dive bomb attack is great for making your team go invisible within an instance, but also applying a debuff to those caught within it as well. Now, it's a bit tough to pull off in GMs unless you're already invisible, but in campaign difficulties, for example, I can see the dodge being really helpful alongside the other dodges we have. All of this is great when you consider the fact that everyone will also get damage resistance when pulled off, so you really do become a lifesaver in the end. Now to properly support the setup, you'll want to have both your mobility and strength at around 70 to 100, or 70 to 80, with your mobility being ideally the highest, as you can easily refund your midi if you used Gambler's Dodge. You'll then want to have a Reaping Wellmaker so that every time you dodge and get a kill afterwards, you can create a well. This will be further supported by the Well of Ordinance mod and Battle for Well mod, which will allow you to produce two wells at once. You'll then lastly want to have Well of Tenacity on you so you can get a 50% damage reduction upon wells collected. If you like, you could swap out Well of Ordinance for Elemental Time Dilation instead so you can increase the duration of Well of Tenacity, although the choice is down to you. Overall though, we're going to be packing a lot of resistance which should be enough for you to protect and save others in higher difficulty. Now although the build is vastly different from Bomb Tree Void back in the pre-old Void days, it still holds its weight pretty well. So from here your weapon should focus on best anti-everything gear so you can be flexible wherever you go. My primary for example is the piece of Mind Pulse with Perpetual Motion and Harmony and it's a great weapon to use as an anti-unstoppable weapon. This weapon being in rapid fire allows users to melt combatants quickly and Harmony is an amazing perk to use when switching back and forth with your other weapons. As the weapon has an origin trait and comes with a land tank perk, this will ultimately make your hunter very tanky as long as it net kills, which for this build will be often and useful for the thick of things. Alternatively, you can use Arbalist which is a great weapon to use if you want to break elemental shields down quickly and weaken them for you and your team. For secondary, we have the Enigma with Substance and Frenzy as main perks, and this weapon will be your main tool of debuffing combatants and lowering their defences when you get the catch on them. With Substance and Frenzy combined, it makes a powerful combo that keeps getting stronger the longer we stay in a fight, and then applying the Psycho Hack trait will reduce income and damage from the effective target, making this highly effective for reducing mini bosses there and then. 
We also have the suppressing glaive ability which allows us to suppress combatants and pretty much put them out of action to some degree. This is a highly effective setup that you'll want to have if you want to prevent certain combatants with getting a catch on you. Now for heavy we have the hothead with tracking and explosive light which is a great weapon you use if you want to delete bosses within 2 hits or less. Not a lot more to say about heavy as we have a pretty well supported setup that you can use however you like so heavy can be mixed to fit into the current activity of your choice. For stats as mentioned we want to have both mobility and strength at its highest point you can reach. Now we can be smart with how we do these two areas depending on if you have the armor stat to support them or not. Ideally having 70 to 100 as a split stat will be best as they are achievable by simple corresponding mods. However we can also max out our mobility and then push strength as high as we can if we have the gambler's dodge ability available. This may be risky for some as it means you'll need to be relying heavily on your mobility stat to get your dodges up and ready when demand is needed but it also means that you can free up your mods for other key mods you may want if you're happy with the results. Now to help you in this area, if you have the Radiant Light mod that will give you a plus 20 in strength for free which will then allow you to build the rest from there. We can then add in the elemental worlds that will be chipping in here and there and then having the invigoration, absolution and distribution perk will push our ability recovery even further. Your discipline stat is also a stat I would highly recommend you invest in as well if you can as this area will be used to debuff combatants that are touched by it. Now if you can get it up to 50 then great but if not then it's not a big deal breaker as you have other ways of doing it. Some other mods to consider with the build though is to have dynamo mod so you can get super energy back every time we dodge which will be helpful in the long run. Psionic Forging too is a great perk if you have the land tank origin trait as this will extend your duration to 10 seconds instead. Thermoshot Plating is a great mod as well as it reduces incoming solar and arc damage and Suppressing Glaive is a mod that will allow you to suppress combatants via Glaive and like I said I highly recommend you grab one for how powerful it is. That should summarize everything about the stats section that you'll need to know. So here's the mods compiled into one for you. For Head with Mobility, Psionic Forging, Dynamo and Weeping Wellmaker mod, Arm with Mobility, Fastball and Elemental Orders mod, Chest with Mobility, Curse of Dampner, Thermoshot Plating and Battle for Wells mod, Leg with Mobility, Absolution, Invigoration and Radiant Light mod, Cloak with Distribution, Suppressing Glaive and Well of Tenacity mod. So I don't think I need to go through with you what the build does as it's pretty self explanatory but within a few words the build makes dying less achievable for the general masses. Now Omnoculus and Viz builds have always been a great setup for doing any team based content to where survival is highly recommended and since Void 3.0 it's made such a setup even more powerful. Now I will have to admit that I do prefer the old bomb tree void of what we have now as that setup allowed a lot of synergy between offering ability energy and buffs while going invisible. The idea of making your team go invisible and then you get grenade and mini energy back for doing so was always preferred method as it's always guaranteed. Now although the build is still as strong as before we don't have those options available that are similar to the past subject perks but we do get more room to play around and fill in what we like. The common build now allows you to go invisible through two the current build now allows you to go invisible through three different ways. We can debuff combatants through abilities or weaponry, get damage resistance and more which is better as your team can last longer knowing that you're there to save them. Now let me give you a scenario. Imagine a light blade nightfall on master or grandmaster. The boss room doesn't have a lot of cover for your team to escape and when you aggro the boss he will be an even bigger pain to deal with. With the following build even if your team is down as long as you are alive you can easily get them back and then smoke bomb them straight away so they can recover quickly. We also get damage resistance that will be helping us with all sorts of damage coming our way and we also are capable of suppressing targets that bring the heat down from our teammates. Trust me when I say this but if you're someone that's using this setup I would highly recommend you keep them as they will be a total lifesaver in the end. Its usage and coverage is pretty extensive and I'm sure you'll find a way to use this reliably for the coming tough content. Do remember we can improve this build further and using different aspects is encouraged as the ability to do so is there. 
I also recommend you play around with the mods as well so you can have more damage or faster super over time. Every little helps. But if you want something simple and easy to use while playing with your friends in legendary campaign etc, then go ahead and get your Omniloculus on. So if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny news and content. Once again thanks for stopping by and I'll see you on the next one.